Welcome everyone, today we're going to be looking at dependency injection, so if you find yourself in a category of people where you've been using dependency injection but you don't really know how it works under the covers or you would like to know and you're basically no longer okay with just using it in your day-to-day -day life and being in the dark or you would just like to know a little bit more about reflection, you've came to the right place today, we're going to be building our own very simple dependency injection container and we're just going to take a look at the inner working parts. Again, starting real slow and in the same manner, building it up step by step. So usually what you do is you start with some kind of service. I'm going to go ahead and create a new hello service. And uh, by the way, I'm using Linkpad for this tutorial. Link is in the description. Uh, it's not an affiliate link. I am just very happy using this uh, piece of kit to do my lessons. So. Typical scenario, we have some kind of service, we might put something into this service, but for now this will be a super simple class where we'll just have a print function where we're just gonna do hello world and dump it, All right? And then on this service, we can go ahead and uh, call print, right? And the, re the results are gonna be output here, so I'm just gonna make sure I increase the the size of this so you all can see this. So we have this hello service, let's go ahead and uh, make something that consumes this service, right? So we have a consumer equals new service consumer, right? So service consumer is just another service. So a service is just a class that's gonna be doing something. And we, what we're going to do is we're gonna have a constructor where we're gonna be supplying a hello service into our uh, service that's going to be consuming a service, right? So here we have a hello. Let's go ahead and make a global field. Just like that. And now what we can do is we can grab this service. We can put it into the constructor here, right? And, uh, and now what we can do on the consumer is go ahead and call print as well but what we're gonna do is we're just going to grab all our hello service and uh, we're gonna call print on there and uh, we, we don't really need to do much more we'll just get to hello worlds and it's pretty self-explanatory what's happening here so what we're doing here is we're manually instantiating classes right so we're providing a little container of where the memory to basically have this class is going to get allocated into right so we're saying we need to store somewhere this service somewhere in memory store it here etc right so this new keyword is the primary thing that we're trying to get rid of uh, so what you will see in .NET Core is primarily right at the beginning in your startup you will regis register all the services that you're going to be using in your application, right? So this is what we want to get rid of, this new keyword. And primary way that we can get rid of is, let's say that we will just get, we'll create a little container. That's what a dependency injection container is. We create a container where we register all of our services and that manages the creation. So the new keyword. So from this little application, the reason I called it activator here at the top is what I actually want to do is I want to show you how we can activate these uh, services ourselves, okay? And uh, we can use the, a, the activator. If you've seen it before, you're going to be okay. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, this might be something new for you to learn. So uh, activator is a static class, uh, which is part of the reflection API, and we can create an instance here. And all we have to do is we have to uh, provide a type of some class that we want to create, okay? And uh, here we're gonna, again, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna comment this out here. Not that semicolon on there. Here we have this service. We're just gonna be instantiating it in a different way. And because what this returns is a object type, we actually want to go ahead and uh, cast it at the moment. But Really, when we get a, when we get to the dependency injection container, we won't need to do any casting, okay? So, we'll have this service, and let's go ahead now and create the consumer. 
we provide the service consumer type and we want to create a service consumer okay so if we run this we're gonna run in into a exception no parameter parameter less constructor is defined right so because we have a constructor if we wouldn't have uh, a constructor with a parameter we would be we would have no problem resolving this object this uh, and we wouldn't have no problem creating this object how we did with the hello service here we're failing here because it expects a hello services parameter right so what we do is with the activator we can then provide they're basically different overloads of this function we can provide a service as a parameter and now this will basically inject it so we're at the same point here but now what we're doing is we're using the reflection API to create this okay so this is just one step in the direction of right we're not we're still kind of manually instantiating them but we're now doing it in a way where the code is instantiating them at runtime based on knowledge about itself right so what we want to do now is move in a direction where we can have a container where we store all of our types and a resolver which is going to look at the container and is going to be like right uh here are the types that we have uh, registered let's go ahead and try to use the activator to instantiate them right so you can see that the if, I t if we take a look at the create create instance function right here we have the type right and the way that you obtain the type is you wrap the type and type off and then you can get, get a bunch of information about that type so for example if i dump this again and uh, the reason i'm explaining here if you're like why am i spending time on this some people don't understand this fully because they, they see it for the first time essentially what type off returns you is a type object so if we hover over type of maybe not maybe if we store it in a and hover over a we can see it's a system.type class and this type class is essentially code as data right so uh, this is your code in its data representation and this is how it looks in memory and this is all the information about your code or about this class all right that we can create and uh, what it's essentially comprised of and what it is right it's its definition and uh, link pad's really cool like this to let you look at it and all its different properties but yeah where we want to go from now here is essentially uh, let's let me go ahead and save this one i'll call this uh, resolver and container this is essentially what we're going to be building first steps is the container we want to be able to register the services just how we do in uh, .NET Core right so let's go ahead and create a public class and we will call this dependency ah. container okay so what is this container gonna have uh, well we are gonna have a list of types right so you know how we grab a type we just want to know about any type that we can create so if we want to create a service consumer we're gonna need a hello service to supply it okay so we need to know about both types and we're, we're gonna be storing these types in this list and we're gonna call these dependencies okay these are all dependencies and let's go ahead and create a dependency so it kind of looks a little bit more dotnet core-ish we're later gonna go ahead and take a look at singleton and transient pattern lifetimes uh, for these dependencies but oh no it should be nothing too foreign if you've been doing c-sharp for quite some time and if you're watching this video about dependency injection i'm assuming you know something a little bit uh, something about uh, c-sharp so we're uh, type you can take a look at this we're just passing any old value in here and we're just adding it to this list right so this is just information about some type so like a class is a type a function can be a type etc but we're adding the dependency now we also want to be able to get the depend dependency so we want to be able to return a type and get the dependency i have trouble spelling dependency and uh, we want to get some sort of a type uh, what i'm going to be primarily doing is for my de dependencies i'm just gonna select the first one i'm just gonna expect to have it and uh, i'm gonna compare by the name because essentially this is an object reference that's going to be stored in here and an object reference that i'm going to be passing in here 
It's going to be two different objects, so I can't compare the two objects. I need to compare their names to really know that if it's the same type or not. So now what I can do is I can register stuff with my dependency injection container. So let's go ahead and create our container, new dependency container. And for my container, I can go ahead and add a dependency. And uh, we can either supply it like this, or we can even go ahead and add another cool little way of doing it is just supplying a type here. And then we would have to say type of T. Okay. And uh, what this gives us then is maybe what you can call a little bit of a more aesthetically pleasing way of adding a dependency. All right. So consumer service, there we go. And uh, quickly, if I would put a breakpoint here, run this missing a semicolon, that's all right. Uh, object reference not set to an instance of an, of an object, always initialize your lists. So we are going to create a type here. Okay, so we reached this uh, breakpoint. All, all that I really want to do is I want to take a look at this container and really make sure that the, if I look at the results view, you can see that I get the hello service and I get the service consumer. And again, probably good. If, uh, I can't zoom in on the de debugger, sorry, but Essentially, yeah, we have the hello service and service consumer, so we can use this or this way to register our types. Okay, so yeah, it's just two different ways uh, about having novelty, right? Uh, we register our dependencies, right? How about we actually go and uh, resolve these dependencies, right? So uh, I'm going to delete. Uh, actually, we will probably need to look at this to kind of get an idea of what we need to write. So let's go ahead and say dependency resolver. And here in the constructor, I'm just going to go ahead and pass my uh, container. I'm going to make a global field for my container. I'm going to make sure that I store it here. Okay. So here I have my container. Let's go ahead and just be able to grab one service right so we have two services we have to do an injection with one of them uh, what i want to do is essentially just resolve the hello world service because that is going to be a much easier thing to do so i'm just going to comment that one out for a second but what we essentially want to do is we want to get some sort of a type uh, and we want to get a service right and of some type and uh, in here, we don't really need to pass a anything in the constructor. Again, it's sort of going to be of the same difference he, uh, as we have here. We supply a type that we want to add. Here, we're just going to be supplying the type that we want to resolve. An easy way that we're going to do here is we're going to get the type from our container. So at this point, we are just basically saying, right, do we have this type in our container? So we're going to get a dependency of T. We can't really pass just T. So we got to say type of T and this is going to get our type. So this is a class of type. And here we can use this service here. You can use the activator to essentially cast to the type of this function that we're providing here and the type of we can just supply the type here. OK, so we're getting the type from our container and we're instantiating it and get casting it to the type that we are going to be specifying, right? So just making a little bit of space, uh, let's go ahead and create our resolver, uh, dependency resolver. Uh, in .NET Core, I think this is more or less called uh, service provider or something like that. So you have the iService container and iService provider. I'm pretty sure the same object inherits from both of those and you're sort of depending on what which role it needs to fulfill. But yeah, we have the resolver. Let's go ahead and replace this part since we already have it down there translated to the resolver service. We want to grab the resolver and we want to get a service of hello service. OK, and uh, this a we don't really need it. Uh, the consumer part, we already know that we just supply uh, the parameters stacked on so we don't really need to take a look at this as well so let's go ahead and run this and here you can see again we're just getting the humble hello world and uh, 
this is now where we want to kick it up a notch. We're going to add the service consumer and uh, we're going to make sure that we're going to check does this service need constructor parameters or does it not? Okay. So let's go ahead and oh, we already have that dependency. It's just that we actually want to resolve it, right? So let's go ahead and try to resolve service consumer. Still the same print function, right? No parameter parameterless construction defined, right? So we're in the same we're in the same basket as we've been before. So uh, let's actually bring it here real quick. I'm just going to return here so nothing else executes. When I run this, what I want to do is. I want to show you how you can inspect and find uh, um, things that you are looking for essentially because at the, at the moment because at the moment we're essentially looking for a constructor so as I said before type of contains information about a type so we're gonna dump this we're gonna take a look at this list and we're gonna we're, you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna look through this whole list and you're gonna try to find something that represents any information about a constructor and what you're going to stumble upon is a decla declared constructor constructors properties right and in here you're going to see that one constructor and when you look through this you're going to be like hmm i don't see any constructors in its properties or fields that it has right there there's probably then a function that lets you get it because the results of functions don't get displayed here because you never trigger them so let's go ahead and actually get uh, constructors because there can be multiple ones right we can get constructors and again these are the of type constructor infos and uh, this is going to be a list so if this had multiple constructors we would have multiple constructors here okay so now what we can do is we can select so x is a particular constructor and for this x we can again we can just go ahead look through all the functions that are here and find something that resembles anything about parameters in the constructor because this is of type constructor info we just want to find out about the parameters on the, this constructor okay and we get a function called get parameters okay so here we execute it and you can see that we can see the parameter type type of hello service is on our service consumer and if we would have added something like string here and we rerun this we can see that we can see the name of the service and we can see the type of the service so primary thing that we're interested in is getting the type of the service okay that's how we know which other dependency to grab from the, the container in order to stick it in there right so we're essentially going to be having a service which needs to exist before we resolve another service okay so if you watch the middleware video it's kind of the same where we need to know about the whole pipe before we about all the parts of the pipe before we construct the whole pipe okay so we need to know about the service that's going to be going into that service before actually instantiating that service so yes uh what we want to do is instantiate this hello service type before creating the service consumer okay so logically what we need to do is we need to check if uh, the dependency that we currently extracted right let's go ahead and rename this type to dependency uh, and we will supply this dependency here again what we want to do is know which and rather not which uh, if it only has one constructor we want to grab the constructor so we're going to go to dependency we're going to get constructors and what we're going to do is we're going to get a single constructor and uh, what this will allow us to do is essentially check we can add more uh, error checking around this uh, Dolphin Core have it but essentially what this does is right you can only have one constructor because otherwise at runtime how are we meant to realize what constructor to resolve right so you can only get one constructor and single if we don't get a single response from this function it's going to throw okay we make sure that we get a single constructor and uh, then we are going to constructor conductor it's gonna be a constructor okay then we're gonna take our constructor and we're gonna get all the parameters okay so because we can have multiple parameters uh, we want to instantiate every single service uh, 
before we instantiate the next one. And again, I'm going to be using recursion for this one. Recursion is very nice in this sense. Uh, what I want to do is create a, a for loop where parameters, I'm going to be going for each parameter is length. And uh, what I want to do is increment standard for loop, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, now what I want to do is essentially store my implementations of those parameters, the services that I'm again going to resolve using the activator. I need to store them somewhere before I pass them into the final activator. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, parameter implementations. And this is going to be a new object array because once we initialize the parameters there they are going to be objects they're essentially going to be instances we just don't know which type it is but that's all right uh, parameters dot length and we're gonna have as much as instances as much as we have parameters so that's why uh, this makes sense uh, so then we want to populate this right so let's go ahead because once we have the parameters it's parameter info so and it's an array so what we can do is uh, we can grab our activator it, it returns an object so it's okay if we store it there okay we're gonna create an instance and instead of the dependency let me go ahead and hide my output so we are gonna go into the parameters and we're gonna grab the same index that we're storing it into and we're just gonna uh, get our type okay uh, it's gonna be a function oh and I think actually it's not get type because I want parameter type yes so get type would have gotten me the type object for parameter info uh, what I want is I want the parameter type so whatever parameter this is re representing I want that parameters type okay so in our case, the parameter type is going to be hello service. Okay, and we're gonna create an instance of hello service. We're gonna have any other services, although we only have one, so that is fine. What we now want is we want to pass these, but as you can see, we would then lose the parameter less service. So what we want to do is we want to uh, put an if statement. We wanna check, right? Um, do we have for our parameters length? Is it more than zero? Do we have parameters? Uh, if we do, uh, then let's go ahead and do this whole thing with trying to resolve additional services. And at the end here, we can then do the same thing as we did here. Uh, however, we will also provide our parameters at the end. Okay, and now let's go ahead and remove this bit at the top or actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment it out in case anybody needs it for whatever reason and now we get hello world again okay so what you can do you can put, put breakpoints in here put breakpoint I don't know here run this uh, you will see that the dependency is service consumer uh, the parameter implementations we can take a, take a look at parameter implementations you can see that it's a hello service because if we take a look at the parameters we're going to see that um, the parameter representation is of the hello service, hello uh, parameter of the constructor of this one. And uh, in here we can see the parameter type is hello service, the service that we're going to try trying to uh, resolve. And uh, if we take a look, do we have this? Yep, container dependencies. And again, if we take a look at the dependencies, we have registered hello service. And that's why we can grab it. Okay. So this is nice. Uh, this is working for now because we only have uh, two dependencies. Let's go ahead and add another layer. And this is going to really give it, give it a test. Uh, let's go ahead and create a public class. And we'll create a message service. And uh, it's going to be doing the same kind of thing. Kind of print. But instead, let's go ahead and do message. And we're going to return it instead of dumping it. Okay. And let's go ahead and turn. Yo. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this here 
into hello service and um, uh, let's we're putting message service into hello service let's call it message and what I'm expecting uh, wh why am I doing this precisely is because to, to show you the way we, that we activate use the activator here is gonna break instantly once we go past this second level so what we're essentially doing here is we're making a concrete concrete implementation of if we have parameters only go to, we only expect that the parameters for the service are going to be parameterless okay we, we're, what if our service that we're injecting here is also going to have parameters it's going to break right here okay so this is what i'm going to show you how to essentially get around to and this is where i'm going to be using recursion to essentially instantiate this service first then this service and then the next service okay and here for the message let's go ahead put it here and make sure that we output it not with a percentage sign rather with a dollar sign okay so you can see that it breaks right here so uh, what we want to do here because here we're essentially resolving a specific type we want to resolve an object instead of the type right we can still do the casting but essentially this will be this is kind of the same uh, same difference here but because we're voiding returning void here we actually want to return an object here so uh, for uh, the get service we're gonna provide the type type okay and we're gonna move the whole thing that we have here down there okay let's go ahead put this here type of a uh, type of T we no longer need that let's go ahead put this here uh, not the type class but rather the type variable uh, the conversion we no longer need it because we return an object what we're going to do here is uh, not catalog. we're gonna call get service uh, type of T and we're gonna cast it to a type okay um, get service yep and let's not forget the semicolon but now what this what essentially this allows us to do now to resolve this uh, creation of instance because our parameter our, our the, the service that we're gonna try to resolve is either going to be parameterless or it's gonna have parameters and if it is if it does have parameters we want to again resolve a service until it has no parameters okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass a get service and we're gonna get the parameter type that we're gonna supply into there okay Put semicolon here, close this off, and let's run this. So, sequin contains no matching element. This is essentially your not found in the depend, not registered with the dependency injection container error. Let's go ahead, grab our message service, add it here, and now we can add it like the, this. Uh, one thing we do is we're getting user query dot message service. This is because on the message service, I'm not actually calling the message function let's go ahead and run this and here we get hello world yo All right double hello double the world so at this point we have more or less assembled a little dependency injection container and we have a dependency resolver as well where we can then use the resolver to get a specific service right and then call whatever function we need on this service and remember remember essentially the program needs to start somewhere so in the background this is what it's going to be using and instantiating what it's trying to alleviate from us is for us to be using the new keywords i'm not saying it's bad but you should be the only time you should be inst instantiating manually is for good reasons okay so let's go ahead and create another window here we're going to be adding uh, lifetimes okay so lifetimes for our services i'm going to remove this because it exists in uh, the previous one and I'm gonna call this uh, lifetimes okay so uh, instead of just storing a type for the dependency I want to give it an object I wanted to know a little bit more about the object uh, that we're registering so the service the dependency that we're registering I want to know about its lifetime let's create a enum and we're gonna create a dependency lifetime and uh, let's go ahead and uh, run with singleton 
zero and uh, transient is one. Okay, so we have singleton and transient singleton is going to persist as we will see in a minute and transient is going to be a fresh instance every time. So actually before we dive in, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use to check this. So here I'm gonna create a par parameter list construction. I'm gonna create a random, a new random. I'm just gonna call next in the constructor, right? And uh, I think, uh, think that will be all right. Uh, let's go ahead and what is this? This is going to be an integer, I think. Yes. So we have a random integer and uh, we're going to be returning a message with this random integer. Okay, so uh, just important not to forget that this is what we're actually doing. So uh, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to resolve the service again and I'll do it three times. So we get a fresh instance every time. Uh, so let's do one, two, three. Uh, same thing with this. And I'm gonna put one, two, three. Okay, so we get a random number every time. And essentially, this means we get a random instance because the, con the constructor is called every time a service needs to be created. And that's when we set the random, okay? So we're trying to flatten it out. We're trying to have the same number across all uh, uh, message services that are gonna be resolved because then we know that it's gonna be a singleton. So for message service, we're trying to register it as a singleton. Okay, so uh, what I, the, the dependency, the particular dependency that we're gonna add, that's where I want to say that, right, this dependency also carry its uh, lifetime. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a class. And we'll call it dependency. Uh, we're gonna have a public uh, type, uh, type, yep, so the type of service, uh, the type of dependency, and uh, we're gonna have a dependency uh, lifetime. Okay, so now when we add a dependency, let's go ahead and say that we're gonna be using these types of functions because eh, they look better. So instead of add dependency here, we're going to be add singleton and here we're gonna say add transient. What we're gonna be doing now is let's go ahead and create a constructor and I'm just gonna give these a uh, real stupid uh, names uh, don't do this uh, I'm just doing it because I don't want to type the whole thing out okay, I'm being lazy for the sake of time saving uh, we just want to add a new dependency every time we register it right dependency uh, we have the type and we, when we add the singleton we can just say right this is a uh, what we actually call we just want to add a singleton right so dependency lifetime let's go ahead and set it to singleton and uh, the reason it's not compiling is because this is of type type I'm gonna go ahead and uh, specify that this is of type dependency now and uh, it seems i have removed the act oh my god i should have done the initialization of the uh, dependency list uh, from the constructor rather than a silly mistake from me I would have realized it sooner or later anyway so uh, and the same same thing thing we want to do here so let me close that uh, I will put this here and instead here we're just gonna say that this is transient okay and uh, now all we want to do is just reference the type here that we want to be grabbing and instead of type again we're gonna be returning dependency so uh, this will break some code up here and primarily what I want to do is get rid of this service consumer. We want to add a hello service here and both of these will add them as transient. And this last one will add a singleton. And I think I misspelled it maybe. Add sing, sig, I can't even spell it single ton okay so we add transient and we add a singleton so the message service uh, this is the part that's going to be 
we'll need to output the same number. So essentially here you can see that we have different numbers. We wanted to output the same number. So this is where I create will be creating the implementations, right? So this is where I want to essentially say or check uh, has this dependency been is this dependency a singleton if it is has it been created before if it if not let's create it and store it and then later on we can grab the same implementation and i will store the implementation on the dependency object as well right so just to make some my life easier for me i'm gonna make it an object it's gonna be an implementation and i'm gonna uh, make a bool of implemented to essentially make my life a little bit easier in terms of uh, checking is it implemented or not okay so we're gonna go for the parameter parameterless uh, construction first because it's easier and then later on we can change this as well so constructor what we're doing here is we're getting a dependency so what we need to do here is grab a dependency from a type so we're gonna be getting a constructor and by the way, this is not the correct, not necessarily correct implementation. We can be doing different things here. Uh, we can essentially, once we register a dependency, we can also store the information about dependency, whether it's a uh, constructorless or parameterless or not or whatever. Once we register it, and that saves us the time of doing it at when we resolve. Probably going to be a little bit more performant, but nevertheless, this is just an example of an explanation how this thing can work. Okay, so we have our dependency type, or rather the dependency class that contains the type, and we still check if it's a parameterless constructor or not. So if it's not parameterless, we don't need to resolve anything else. We can then go ahead and create this instance. So we're going to go ahead and create the type. Okay, so this is where we want to check our dependency a little bit. So our dependency, we want to check if it's implemented already. Okay. So if it is implemented, we want to go go ahead, grab our dependency and return the implementation, right? Because if it's already implemented, there is no need to re-implement it again. It doesn't matter what lifetime it is. So then we can check if it's not implemented, we need to implement it. Because now what we can do is we can check the lifetime, right? So if the li lifetime is singleton, all right we will need to store this. So let's go ahead, uh, do our implementation. Implementation. And uh, for our dependency, we're going to, I didn't create a function here. So let's go ahead and create a public void. Add implementation. Uh, it's going to be an object. Implementation. Uh, implementation. A lot of a lot of implementations implemented is true okay so when I added the implementation I'm basically storing the implementation I'm just setting a flag that this is now implemented don't implement it again okay and uh, obviously this again I'm just gonna reiterate because I'm thinking of all the different ways this can be done this is not the most uh, correct implementation and again this is just a creative process of explaining how this can look like I'm just gonna add our implementation here right so has it been implemented before if yes return the implementation is this a singleton if it is uh, let's create the implementation and store it so then later on if we try to resolve it again we just get the cache essentially once we added the implementation we can actually go ahead and return it here as well or rather probably let's take this out here and return the implementation here okay uh, too many letters in this word implementation okay so more or less looking at this I think this will work uh, one thing that I'm thinking is we'll need to do we'll need to do the same kind of steps here essentially so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking this out into a function okay where I'm gonna be essentially creating the implementation this is what it's uh, doing so from a dependency we want to resolve an implementation it's going to be an object that we're going to be returning remember the reason we're returning an object is because that's what the create instance function of the activator returns so create implementation provide the dependency 
Okay, so here we have the dependency. Let's go ahead and move all this code into here. And we pretty much got our stuff here. So one thing right now is this create instance. We cannot sort of interchange it with this. So what we want to do is pass pass a little factory. So so the same way we can so we can basically define how we want to use uh, the create instance function or how we want to create our dependency. So I'm going to pass a function that is going to accept the type that we want to create and that's going to return an object. Okay, I'm just going to call this factory. Okay, and this factory, I'm going to go ahead and replace this here and I'm going to be still passing the dependency type. So you know what this sort of looks like. We're going to essentially create the implementation. Just too many words. Yeah, I can't, I can't cope with this. Okay. So dependency and then the function. So we're going to have the type and I want to use the activator, create instance and just do it for the type. And then here I'm essentially, I want to do the same thing, right? As it's doing just the type I'm going to be providing here and the rest of the parameters. Well, it's essentially the same thing. I essentially made, if you watched the little, the, sorry, the little, the, if you watch the middleware video, what I essentially did is I made a little middleware here. This is like mini middleware or functional programming, essentially. Okay. So if you don't know much about functional programming to be able to do stuff like this, to open up that kind of thinking, I recommend you take a look at a programming language called Clojure. But yeah, uh, this is essentially what's going to happen now. So let's go ahead and run this. And what you will see is what we're getting is the same number for all of them. Okay. And just to make sure that this is happening for a, so that we are essential, we can define a singleton for our hello service as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, this won't really re reflect it that much, but what we can do is we can add the same random here and we can kind of edit or not. So hello number, uh, we can add the random here. So the first random is going to be from the hello service. Uh, the second yo number is going to be from the message service, right? So you can see this, these numbers are the same in this column and the same in, in the other column. So if I change the hello service to transient, you will see these numbers start to change because the lifetime is different. So we need get a new hello service every time that we run, uh, that we resolve the service cons consumer type. So a new hello service is created for each of them, but the same service is injected into all of those different services. Okay. So this is essentially like a, a an implementation for a dependency injection container. If you are essentially trying to map this knowledge to how it translates to model view controller, so MVC, how does that get it injected into those controllers and uh, those actions? That also uses a reflection, but like on a bit of a different level because MVC itself is built using reflection in the same manner how middleware is built and how dependency injection is built. If you want me to explain model view controller in the same manner I explained these two, I'll leave a comment, right? Uh, otherwise, I'm not going to exactly show you how this maps until I probably get to create that video. But yeah, not to ramble on too much. But yeah, this will be it for this video. If you enjoyed watching it, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to join the Discord channel. I'll be doing quite a few updates there. I also have a giveaway coming up for the 10K celebration. I'll be doing on my Twitch stream most likely. So don't forget to follow my Twitch stream. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you around. Bye-bye.